Welcome back to the MSU Deer Labs online seminar series brought to you by the Mississippi State University Extension Service and the Forest and Wildlife Research Center. I'm Bronson Strickland and I will be the presenter today. Uh, I'd like to also acknowledge my co-author Steve Damaris, colleague of mine and co-director of the MSU Deer Lab. Today I want to focus on all of the aspects of getting a, a place prepared to plant for food plots. What are all the things you need to do ahead of time, planting equipment, etc. So that's really what this presentation is about, is the background and preparation for a food plot system on your property. Next, I want to review some really basic herbicide concepts. Uh, this this was something that was really new to me until about 10 years ago. I just never had any experience using herbicides with food plots. And I'm going to tell you, it is one of those next level activities. Once you learn to identify some of the, the most common weeds and learn the, the appropriate herbicide, it can really be a game changer. Not that big of a deal if you're only concerned about cool season food plot and hunting during hunting season food plot growth not as big of a deal that's typically when you don't see as much weed pressure you certainly can i've seen it before but but most often it's not that big of a deal where it really matters is when you're focusing on deer nutrition in the springtime i'm going to show you some examples and then especially in the summer so if you are going to plan on adding uh, warm season food plots to your property, and again, highly recommended for year round nutrition for deer, warm season food plots or summer food plots seem to be a part of that. You are going to face weed pressure, no way around it. And you're really going to have to learn some basics of herbicides, their application and which ones are appropriate for you. I'm going to show you a couple examples here. It's really easy to show with clover and a grass. In this case, this is ryegrass. Uh, it's really easy for you to just see the difference that an herbicide can make. And the purpose of this plot, of course, it was a cool season plot, but now we're moving into springtime. And what's going on here is the clover is competing with the standing ryegrass. And this swath here for demonstration just shows you using a grass specific herbicide at the right time. You don't want to spray it now at this stage of growth of the grass. You want to do it when it's a lot younger and still growing, but this can be the result. So in April and May, you have a beautiful thriving stand of clover versus a mixed stand with a little bit of clover that's being choked out, suppressed, shaded out by some dominant grass. Another example here, um, look at the difference on the left. This was a, a strip in the middle uh, that was left. In this case, it wasn't ryegrass. It was the existing that was planted in the fall, the, the rye, uh, not ryegrass, but cereal rye, in this case, elbin rye. But you can see where the sprayer missed a little bit. And so the, the rye is still standing there. Uh, but look how clean that clover plot is. And this is really the reason uh, ryegrass is just an example, but in, in the southeast, ryegrass can be a really, really big problem. Even if you have never planted ryegrass on your property, it's still likely a problem because it was so commonly planted years and years and years ago. Uh, ryegrass is not a perennial. That's what surprises a lot of people. Uh, it is an annual, uh, but it is a prolific reseeder. And so it's going to grow as you're seeing now. That picture on the left, it is setting seed and seed's going to go in the soil. And the next fall on that plot on the left, there's going to be ryegrass there, even though you didn't plant it. So what is the, the big deal with it? I don't really like ryegrass as a food plot forage, which that will be the, the topic in, an, in uh, another seminar when we talk about cool season forages. But this is the big reason here is in the springtime when I'm really wanting to maximize the growth of my clovers is I do not want it competing with this dying and at this point rank ryegrass. So these are two plots from the exact same property. 
one of the plots we did not apply like a month earlier we did not apply uh, any grass specific herbicide and on the right hand side we did and so this is a picture's worth a thousand words here on the same day the 13th of june you can see the differences uh, uh, in those plots so herbicides can play a very valuable role in your food plot management I wanted to give you some examples of some very common herbicides. Uh, a list of all the herbicides you could use in food plots is exhaustive. I mean, I'm, I'm sure we could come up with a list of a hundred different ones. Um, but these, in my experience, in my part of the world with the forages I plant, most of the time, I never say never, never say always, most of the time, this is going to get the job done. Um, Starting out with, I've got the trade name on the left in bold. That's that's the the, the name you're going to see most boldly at the store. Uh, Roundup. The the chemical in parentheses, the active ingredient, the chemical is glyphosate, and then it is an example of a non-selective herbicide. It's going to kill just about everything. Of course, there are some uh, weeds now that are that are uh, Roundup resistant or glyphosate resistant, but I'm I'm not speaking to that. What I mean is, you spray it on just about any plant, and it's going to kill it. When would you do this? An example would be um, if you were getting prepared to plant a food plot in a month or two. A really good idea is to take glyphosate go to that food plot and we'll say burn it down with herbicide but just spray the entire field give it two or three weeks for all those plants to die uh, the root mass is going to be a lot looser anybody that's ever gone out to a field with all this growing living vegetation uh, you'll spend the day trying to get all the the roots up out of the ground and the clotting they're going to do and wrapping around your disc and all that sort of stuff so it is very advisable two to three weeks before you plan to disc is to go spray it with a non-selective herbicide like Roundup. One of my favorites because I love clover so much and I'm trying to get rid of uh, competing grasses is uh, Clethodem. the ingredient. Ingredient Select is going to be the, the trade name, but there are several of these. There are several grass specific uh, herbicides that you can use. I personally have just had a lot of luck with clethodem. Then there are some that can be uh, a pre-emerge. So you're going to apply it on the soil at the time of planting or right before planting or right after planting. But basically it is going to get into the soil and prevent the weed seeds from germinating. That's the whole reason there. The, the two examples above uh, would be post-emerge or post-emergent meaning you are putting the herbicide the chemical on the growing tissue of the plant the pre-emergent is you are getting it in the soil to prevent the plant weed seed plant from germinating two more very common ones is uh, 2,4-D this would be just the opposite of the grass specific this would be something where you wanted to kill only broadleaf plants so i don't want to kill the grasses but i do want to kill all of the competing broadleaf weeds you would use something like 2,4-D and and then when you're growing legumes again in a clover plot for example 2,4-D-B or butyrac that would be the application for that so you can think about here um, if i'm wanting to spare the grasses kill the broadleaf weeds or if I want to kill the grass, um, or if I want to kill everything. You literally, with, with these combinations here, have, have a, a really good opportunity to get done what, what you're seeking to do. And again, we could list 50 more. You may, uh, in your area, there may be one that is more effective. So I would utilize your county agent, your county extension agent, most every single state through the extension service has a list of herbicides that are popular and effective in your area so that would be something very good to check out